I've always broken the forms up into their pieces. I think painting by the numbers must have had an enormous effect on me when I was really young. Um, because I was amazed at how they could take that apart. And then when I saw people do them, they would put in these colors all over the place. And then when they were finished, it would turn into something. I thought that was a wonderful thing to be able to do. Um, and I love to watch people putting jigsaw puzzles together. I needed something which would come off the canvas. And I didn't want to work just in heavy impasto, because those lines between the spaces, for me, were a very important way for finding my way around the painting. But then I decided, if I find my way around the painting, that it is, in fact, um, a road of some sort. Uh, if not a maze, then a road, or several roads, or a map, um, or a place through the landscape or the figure. Um, and so I started searching for a material that would allow that to happen, but not be predictable or obvious. So I started out first with just a painted black line, but that wasn't very good. That just made, um, it cut up the canvas too much. Um, and then, oddly enough, I suppose uh, when you come back to what it is, there I, I was walking through pearl paint, and there was this stuff. It started this, um, what is that, puff paint. I said, look at that stuff. It just stands up right off the shirt. Well, if it stands up off the shirt, it's going to stand up off the canvas. So I bought some of it, um, and I started to use it. And it was all right, but I didn't have the flexibility with it. So I had to start mixing my own, my own relief lines. Um, so I used acrylic paint and, um, and a gel, which I mixed, um, and tried to reload back into the old bottles, uh, or else I would um, uh, try and find, uh, I, was, <laughs> I, would, I would use um, my veterinarian's old, large hypodermic needles uh, to uh, to get the line that I wanted, because I, I wanted a thin line. I wanted a line that when the light hit it um, would uh, be there at certain times and not at others. This goes back into what you see and what you don't see. But I wanted it to come off the canvas. Um, I wanted it to be, I guess I was in a way, almost like a tightrope that you would walk around the shapes that if you were in the painting, you could look down and you would see where you were. Um, so I projected um, and drew uh, and added the color system. And then I would take the, can I take the canvas down off of the easel because I can't put the, um, the three-dimensional material on while it's on the easel because it drips off. And I put it on a flat surface. And when I put it on a flat surface and I start doing the lines, for me, at that point, the, represent the representational painting becomes abstract because I am into the lines. I am into the, I am into the, I am the one walking on the canvas making the lines. And since I pay such close attention to where that line is going, I am in an abstract place. There are several paintings in this. There's, there's the line painting uh, that questions the place of where you are if it's just the black lines on white. They're unsure sometimes. And then, and then I will add color area. Sometimes I will re-add the relief lines uh, after the color area is on if I'm not happy about where it is. Sometimes I'll paint right over and I won't put them back. Um, and that's when I add more of the place uh, with the color. So there's an abstract place that appears with the line, and then there's more representational place that comes up with the color.
while the landscapes have their element of um, classic or traditional beauty, there's also an underlying tension in them, and sometimes it turns out to be an odd um, object that's in there, which is not traditionally beautiful, or uh, something that causes uh, tension in what you might have as a predictable scene. Alaska is one of the last places of uh, adventure, roughness, beauty, frontier, uh, refinement, all of those things. Alaska also is so vast that when things get used up, it's not as if you can call up a company to come in and take away an old truck. You use the truck until it dies and then you take the parts that you need and, and the rest is, uh, is left uh, to be claimed or unclaimed by what's around it. Now, if you expand that to New York, you have 18-foot piles of garbage along the sidewalk. The balance between what we as people leave behind and what's there is at one level acceptable and becomes part of what is happening there, what is really happening there. And when that gets out of kilter, you have some of the worst problems that you see in New York with pollution and crowding and the effect that it has on people and the tension and the anxiety and the, and the filth. But an abandoned truck on a road near an enormous river in Alaska, to me, does not look like pollution it looks like what's really there. And it doesn't look ugly to me. It doesn't look like a postcard that has the expected harmony. This was an unexpected harmony. I think nature and the landscape are very harsh and are very savage. Animals who eat their young, the landscape that renews itself by fire, uh, the forest that cannot grow again unless the old one burns, the salmon, when they come to Alaska, come there to spawn and die. They're never leaving. And they float to the edge of the rivers, and they die there. And they start disintegrating. And the, the dead fish bodies kind of seep back into the rivers and feed the newborn salmon. And so it was that kind of imagery that really started the Alaska series. It comes from thinking about what's a beautiful painting. Tension, paying attention, uh, finding your way. One of the first reviews that I got a long time ago, uh, the reviewer looked at the work and said, this work looks as if it's in pieces and elements of it don't look resolved. And I really, I thought, oh, Something is really wrong. Unresolved images, that must be the plague. I, um, who knew unresolved images? I thought this was horrible. <laughs> um, and then finally, it wasn't until, I would say, just about 10 years ago, that I realized that that's what I do. That the images that I put together, the pieces and the way that I see them, um, are never completely resolved. Finally, I came to the conclusion that that wasn't really a criticism, that that was an insight that he had had into the way that I painted, and I just didn't recognize it for a long time. 